Imagine resting your hand on a red-hot stove and feeling absolutely nothing. No sizzle of alarm, no sharp recoil, no rushing adrenaline. For a bead, it sounds like freedom. No migraines, no aches, no limits. But that imagined silence hides something far more terrifying. Pain is not punishment. It is information, the single most elegant survival system evolution ever engineered. This video pulls on that thread and unspools the truth. What would really happen if you could never feel pain? Not in a thought experiment, but step by step. The 10 levels of consequence that unfold when the body loses its most honest sensor. We begin with a hard fact. Your body is wired with millions of specialized detectors. Tiny, lightning-fast nerve endings called nociceptors sit under your skin, in your muscles, joints, and organs. The moment they detect thermal, chemical, or mechanical harm, they fire electrical signals into your spinal cord and brain. That cascade produces reflexes, you jerk away, and hormones, you flood with adrenaline. And learning, your brain files away a painful lesson. Level 1. The Hidden Survival Code Pain is not a bug, it is a survival protocol. When a toddler learns not to touch a flame, it's pain that writes the rule. Nociceptors transduce damaging stimuli into spikes of electrical activity that travel to the spinal cord and up to the brain, milliseconds between contact and command. The reflex arc is so fast, you often withdraw before you consciously realize there's a threat. That's by design. Beyond reflex, pain coordinates whole body responses. Your sympathetic nervous system ramps up, breathing quickens, blood flow redistributes, clotting cascades prime, all of which serve to limit damage and start repair. Pain is the body's emergency broadcast system. Without it, there's no alarm, and without alarm, mistakes that would normally be corrected immediately persist and amplify. Level 2. The First Days Without Pain The earliest chapter of Living Without Pain reads like a fever dream of invincibility. Imagine skipping the grind of chronic back pain, the migraine that ruins a week, the twinge that limits a hike. People with congenital insensitivity to pain report the same intoxicating early liberty. But the freedom is deceptive. Because you lack the local feedback that tells you to stop, your motor system doesn't know to limit force, range, or repetition. Twisted ankles go untreated. You keep walking on a ligament sprain. You pick up a hot pan and continue chopping vegetables. Muscle micro-tears accumulate because there's no message to rest. Clinical studies show that children born without pain average far more unrecognized injuries. Bruises, burns, and joint damage go unnoticed until they cause structural failure. The invisible toll becomes visible quickly. Joints that would normally remodel and adapt under controlled stress instead accumulate wear from inappropriate loading. Tendons and ligaments fray because they were never allowed the time and pain-mediated rest required for proper healing. Level 3. The Infection Spiral Pain is a behavioral immune system. A sting, a cut, a penetrating wound. Pain forces you to look, clean, and protect. Remove the pain, and microbes find a welcome mat. People with congenital pain insensitivity suffer silent infections repeatedly. A small cut becomes an abscess because it wasn't cleaned. A bite goes septic because there was no alarm to change behavior. Data from clinical reports, including NIH-supported case series, show elevated rates of osteomyelitis, chronic wound infections, and even systemic sepsis in those who cannot feel pain. The immune system can still function, but it often fights in the dark, without the corresponding behavioral adjustments that limit pathogen entry and load. And the feedback loops worsen, damaged, Chronically infected tissue sends inflammatory signals that confuse repair, immune cells become misdirected, and you end up with long-term pathology that could have been avoided by a simple early response. Level 4. The Skeleton Under Siege Bones are living tissue that depend on mechanical feedback. Tiny microfractures from daily activity are an essential stimulus for osteoblasts to rebuild stronger bone. Pain tells you to offload a limb, to rest an overused area, Without it, micro-damage accumulates faster than repair. Pediatric cases are striking. Children who can't feel pain often present with multiple fractures by age 10, not from risk-taking alone, but from repetitive, unmodulated stresses during play. Over time, bones lose their calibration. The structural homeostasis that maintains bone density and geometry requires the negative feedback of pain to operate correctly. Worse, because you don't alter behavior after an injury, the pattern of loading that remodeled the skeleton into a robust, adaptive structure never occurs. The result is a skeleton that's brittle, in the precisely wrong ways, prone to catastrophic failure with otherwise trivial trauma. Level 5. The brain loses its programming. Pain is a teacher of risk. 
In childhood, it trains the amygdala, prefrontal cortex, and related circuits to recognize hazards, assess cost, and build inhibition. Neuroimaging studies, including work cited out of Harvard and other leading labs, reveal that individuals lacking normal pain experience show reduced activation in prefrontal and limbic regions that mediate decision-making, fear conditioning, and impulse control. Without pain, the brain doesn't learn the visceral calibration between action and penalty. The result is not just physical damage but behavioral impairment, poor risk assessment, impulsivity, and a higher tendency toward reckless choices. This rewiring raises social and cognitive stakes. Empathy, too, is tied to shared representations of pain. The same neural systems that register our hurt help us understand others. A life without pain risks not only the body but the social wiring that binds us. Level 6. The Genetic Switch SCN9A and the Promise of Turning Pain Off at the molecular core of pain sits a family of ion channels that let nerves carry the pain signal. One gene in particular, SCN9A, encodes a sodium channel critical for nociceptor firing. Researchers discovered that specific mutations can abolish pain without interfering with other senses. People born with such mutations have congenital insensitivity to pain, CIP. That miracle mutation immediately sparked a medical dream. What if we could flip that gene off for people who suffer chronic, debilitating pain? The promise is real. Imagine curing intractable neuropathic pain, phantom limb agony, or chemotherapy, induced neuropathy with a genetic switch. But the clinical record of CIP warns us, switching off pain wholesale is blunt instrument medicine. Those with SCN9A loss of function commonly experience self-inflicted injuries, severe joint damage, dental loss, and life-shortening infections. The gene is not a villain, it is a guardian. Level 7. Pharmaceutical Victory, Behavioral Defeat, Analgesia Without Wisdom Modern medicine already gave us tools that blunt pain dramatically. Opioids, local anesthetics, nerve blocks, and novel biologics that attenuate inflammatory signaling. For short-term use, surgery, trauma, analgesia is life-saving. The problem begins when pharmacology becomes a lifestyle, Widespread opioid use has taught society how analgesia decoupled from context creates its own epidemic, addiction, overdose, and a flattened relationship to discomfort. When pain is suppressed pharmacologically but the decision-making architecture in the brain is unchanged, you get a behavioral mismatch. People continue to load damaged tissues because the behavioral breaks are gone. They ignore warning signs, injuries worsen. The workplace injuries of the opioid era offer a social lesson. Reducing pain without restoring or augmenting sensory awareness produces reckless vulnerability at scale. Level 8. Synthetic Substitutes Can Technology Recreate Meaningful Pain? If natural nociception is so essential, can technology replicate its functional role without subjective suffering? This is the promise of sensory substitution and haptic feedback in prosthetics and cybernetic medicine. Engineers are designing systems that deliver graded alerts, vibration, temperature cues, visual overlays, to signal damage to users of prosthetic limbs or to patients taking neuropathy suppressing drugs. But there's a critical limitation. Nociception is not just a scalar alarm. It's embedded in reflex arcs, autonomic responses, hormonal surges, and affective learning. Level 9. The Social and Psychological Fallout Remove physical pain and you often flatten emotional pain too. Neurologically, the anterior cingulate cortex ACC, and related networks process both physical and social hurt. Studies show social rejection lights up the same regions as physical pain, shared circuitry that builds empathy and moral intuition. If we erode that system, the downstream effects are profound. People who can't suffer physically may show blunted emotional responses, less remorse, diminished capacity for long-term planning, and reduced social bonding. Biochemically, pain-triggered surges of dopamine and endorphins create learning loops that reinforce perseverance and achievement. Without those biochemical rewards tied to overcoming discomfort, motivation at scale might erode. Level 10. Ethics, Policy, and the Lasting Verdict We end here, not with a technology checklist, but with an ethical ledger. The temptation to eradicate suffering is noble and human. Yet the science shows that pain is woven into the architecture of life, learning, and sociality. The choices before us are not purely technical, they're moral, legal, and political. And if you want more deep explorations of the biology and ethics that shape our lives, subscribe to Science Unlocked. Tell us in the comments.
Would you turn off pain if you could? And if we ever get the choice, what rules would you demand before flipping the switch?